Yes, welcome back. We're still talking seriously about language as a unifying factor. And I thought I should start by sharing with you, both of you and with the audience my experience in Sokoto when I went for my youth service. I had to learn to speak, you know, to go and shop in the market, I had to learn. Today, more than almost 30 years after, pardon me, mm -hmm. I'm telling my age. <laughs> <laughs> if a fruit seller is trying to sell tomatoes, I mean, fruit to me, and I say, Malam, Dan, Sanu, Dan, La, Nawa, Nawa, Ne, Kabari, Naira, you know, I'm haggling, yes. he will just give me good price. Mm. So yeah. the bottom line is, we do need that language. That language can, can, can unite us, Ali. Well, Sorry, language, language, language can. <laughs> <laughs> language can. Um, I, I'll give you an example. When, when I went for youth service too, uh, <laughs> some five you years ago. get advantage. <laughs> <laughs> that, that year. <laughs> five years when I, when ago. I went for youth service, um, uh, and I got to the, to the uh, director's office. Where was I was it? posted to Abuja Council for Arts and Culture. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Abuja, and then the man says that uh, we're going to be getting uh, 75,000 naira. 75 naira. Ah, sorry, 75 ah, naira, sorry. <laughs> 75 <laughs> naira um, per month. And I was like, no, there are people who are working in Sheraton, working in Presidency, that were getting like uh, 200, 250, so why should we be getting uh, 75 naira? And he said, no, that it's for our transport, accommodation, and welfare. And I said, no, so I protested. And he said he wanted to see the, my call-up letter. So he looked through the call-up letter and he said, you say your name is Ali Baba? I said, yes. He looked through and he said, uh, it's not that he wants to see my real name. So he looked and I said, it's Akbobi Hobo Akborobo Memere Atunyota. And he said, I think Ali Baba will do. You know? <laughs> now, for him, he related with me better when he found out I had a name Ali Baba. And it happens with a lot of people, even us. Mm. Africans, when some Nigerians find out that you can speak Pidgin English overseas, mm -hmm. the bond gets better. Mm -hmm. If they find out that you're Hausa and he's Igbo, they or you don't understand Hausa, he doesn't understand Igbo, Igbo, what is the common ground for them to relate? It has to be English language. But if they can relate in Pidgin, then the bond gets stronger. Mm -hmm. So true, uh, language can be a unifying factor. Uh, above all, for footballers, it also helps. Yes, Okocha told me that when they play football and he says, if they come, if they come, if they come. <laughs> yeah. Not give to me, give on that person, give the guy for your back, give a maker, give a maker. Canu, canu <laughs> free. <laughs> those are you both who <laughs> <people, laughs> yeah, not understand. Say, canu free, canu free. <laughs> and then you see the guy turn and weave the ball to, to Canu. And we say, sometimes when they train, mm. even uh, Celeste Babayaro said, people were learning. Their language. language. So that they can understand. So the, uh, yeah. That you hear some of the English boys they are playing with saying, I did, I did, I did, I did. Give me, give me, give me, I did, I did. Because those of them who train and speak pidgin amongst themselves, like the Nigerian and the Ghanaians, speak pidgin. And so you find that day two, the English people have found that the best way to communicate to some of these boys yeah. is English. So it's actually a bonding factor. Yes, yes it is. Well, which, is why, which is why a lot of, you see, it's, it's also the reason for the attraction. The people who speak French gravitate towards Paris. Yeah, yeah. The people yeah. who speak English gravitate towards England. You understand? So we should those, take pigeons. So the, the people those, gravitate the, towards those, Nigeria. Those in Angola gravitate towards Portugal. Yeah. Or anywhere they speak Portuguese. Yeah, absolutely. So it's it's the attraction and then the binding force as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you know, I, I mean, fine. Can in, can pigeon be that language? Huh, for me, we should really, really look inward because if there's not something in it everybody's focus will not be on it. I know how many countries, I know how many agencies have come since I started working that are trying to study pidgin language. No, not BBC. That was the topic yeah, of BBC, your conversation. Yeah, of course, BBC has a pidgin service now. Mm -hmm. If there's not something there, it's just like in Africa, we wait for outsiders to tell us what is good, what we have that is good. If outsiders are beginning to focus on it, want to learn it, that how does this work? How can this bring us together? Because there is nowhere you are in the world. Pidgin has a rhythm. It's sweet. <laughs> and it's, it's a, a language that it doesn't have an end. You can create, recreate, change. Is that change. good, though? It is. It makes it transient it and fluid. It makes it dynamic. It's just like water telling me that it's nice if water is static. 
when something is transient, that means do you, you can imagine the kind of pigeon they spoke like in the 90s, in the, maybe in the early 70s. If you hear now, you see that things have changed. That means it's a language that can take its own form. It can go from age to age. Maybe the millennials now, they have their own form. Do you, do you find, for example, people, people don't know where you're from? Oh, yes, that one I like. Because if you speak pidgin a certain way, I tell people there's classy pidgin, there's ras ras pidgin, there's pidgin that tells where you're from. So you just have to know the one that works for you. So which one is classic pidgin? Uh, like the pigeon connoisseur. Uh, no, no, no. You know, the, 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 you know uh, the classic pigeon is the one you speak and then you inject with a lot of correct English. English. You know? I, I'll be with you later, make we see. Mm. But the guy that says we'll connect later or we'll go block after we say that's that's serious pigeon. Or uh, can there be a pigeon dictionary? Has anybody attempted to do yeah, that? Yeah, there's, there's been a, there, a lot of there, attempts. There's several, yes, there's several attempts there's at several it. several attempts. But because it's dynamic, yes. your, PG, your dictionary will be outdated in a year. Yes, it is. Yes, because then it's that dynamic. Can be, that can be a lingua franca. Yeah, no, 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 it's gross. Even your Scrabble dictionary started with about like 20 pages. Mm -hmm. Now it has increased. Even the English dictionary, one. they're trying to yes, add more words. Yes, they continue to add words. They're, they're like beginning to add more words. But that's yeah. the beauty of it. Something that doesn't stay in a place, it changes form from time to time. That makes it beautiful. But can we really claim pigeon? We can. Well, can, can Nigeria can. really claim yes, pigeon? We, no, we can't claim pigeon because uh, it was the language that was spoken even in, in the Brazilian fields. Yeah. When the slaves were taken into Brazil to farm in sugarcane farms, mm. cotton farms, and the rest yeah. of them, they found out that the people that were taken from Ghana, the Darome, West African, West Africa, Africa, Africa yeah. and the rest of them were all in the farm. The only way they could understand themselves was to take something the master has said and manage to communicate with it. And so uh, we can't, but, but you... Just come claim to, our coming own. To, yes, coming <laughs> to, coming to uh, the issue of uh, BBC, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. you'll find that the advanced countries respond to need. Mm. They respond to numbers. They respond True to that. dynamics. So they, they, they are like... This language is catching on, and so many people, nearly 20, 30 it, million yes. people speak it. Mm. How many people are you broadcasting to? So if you were broadcasting Hausa to yeah. about 30 million people, and you now find out that 30 million people spoke this other language, shouldn't you have a radio program yeah. for them? By the way, our own television stations don't respond like that. Mm. We wait for what is commercial, mm. and that's what we instead of something that's essential. Mm. But now, Wazobia came mm -hmm. and made it classy and made it acceptable. <laughs> then Ninja FM also Everybody's joined. Everybody's And so now, up. everybody now wants to there's have hardly, a pigeon service. Yeah. Even uh, DSTV. There is hardly any radio station now that doesn't run some kind of pigeon. Or have a program that yes, has... a program that has uh, a pigeon content, pigeon, uh, yes. pigeon service, pigeon delivery. So what would be your messages, your, I mean, different messages to people? I've had this conversation. I'm trying to get people to understand that we need a lingua franca. I'm proposing pidgin. I don't know what. I mean, maybe as a second language. I'm not sure. Well, it's, the, it's not even like, it's nothing to, it's not rocket science. It's the most, that's what everybody would turn to after English, which can unify us truly. After English. Yes, because not everybody was, everybody sees English as our like, the first thing we speak really that is general. Most of us have our indigenous languages which vary from place to place. And that would be very hard. Somebody from Abel Kuta and Ijebubo, we speak different kinds of Ijebu. So that alone cannot bring us together. But English brought us together, kind of. Everybody can understand it. But Pigeon, Pigeon will come better. after it. What, what are your final words? Well, well I, I think that uh, we, we need to accept, first of all, that it's a tool for communication. And any tool for communication. It's a credible a tool, tool for, for communication. For communication. And since it cuts across a lot more people, it should be embraced, should be encouraged. Um, for some, it's a commercial tool. For another one, it's, a, it's just a communication tool. Uh, for some, it's actually just like a status thing. Mm -hmm. And for now, it is the most commonly used um, fuel for comedy. Yeah. It's, it's the yes. most commonly used because the thing is the people the are coming vehicle. from... Exactly. People are coming from places of uneducation. And so because they're not so educated and they can express themselves in Pidgin English better, it is, it is that we also limit our people who want to express themselves. 
I bet if Pidgin English is allowed, a lot more senators and House of Rest members will contribute in the House. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, I must say thank you to both of you for coming. Lolo, Adaku, and Alibaba, people who have made Pidgin English so beautiful and exciting, and hopefully, I mean, and all of you are educated. Don't say not go school. Uh, but, but the Pidgin English brings more money. <laughs> and I tell people, I tell anyone, I say, English is my general language, but my money-making language is Pidgin. So I, do, I speak English to everybody. But right. if I have to speak Pidgin, then that means you're paying. Thank you very much for being on the show. I appreciate it. You're always short notice and you always come. So I'll call you again and you'll come at short notice. No kind. No problem. No kind. And as for you, this is not the time where we say good night to. I don't know whether my Pidgin is sound. My own, my own I'm classic Pidgin. <laughs> no but... worries. <laughs> 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 Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next week. Bye.